Welcome to video number four. Today we're going to talk about ideal voltage and current sources. So just about everybody has a pretty good handle on what a voltage source is. I mean, you can go down to your local convenience store and buy them. Okay, here's a few examples, a nine volt battery and a three volt lithium cell. So <laughs> voltage sources are very, very common. Current sources, well, not so much. Uh, and because they're less common, they're a little bit mysterious, but today I hope to dispel some of that mystery. And with that in mind, let's start. All right, here we have the schematic symbols for voltage sources and current sources. Starting on the left, the symbol for a battery, which probably just about anybody watching this video is going to be familiar with. A more generalized symbol for a voltage source is just a circle with two terminals coming out. Uh, sometimes the polarity will be uh, explicitly shown. And sometimes, if it's not a DC source, we will draw the waveform of the function inside of it. For example, we have uh, a sinusoidal source here. All right. Current sources are usually represented by a circle with an arrow pointing through it in the direction of current that the source forces in a network. Uh, occasionally you'll see this two intersecting circle version of the symbol, but that's not very common anymore. Uh, you usually see this simplified version. All right, before we talk about what happens inside these sources. Let's look at a resistor for a second. All right, now the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance is captured quantitatively by Ohm's law. V equals I times R, I equals V over R, R equals V over I. Resistance, of course, is measured in ohms, but alternatively, we could look at the conductance of this device, which is the reciprocal of resistance. Conductance G is uh, given in Siemens, that's the SI unit of conductance. Uh, the obsolete unit was the Mo represented with an upside down omega. Now, personally, I prefer the upside down omega because it's much more distinctive when you're writing it. S sometimes looks like a five, or it looks lowercase versus uppercase. Eh, just for my own convenience, I prefer to use the upside down omega. All right, now let's say that this resistor has this transfer characteristic. That is, if we graph the current flow through the resistor as a function of the voltage drop across the resistor, we get this straight line. It's a straight line because this is a linear relationship, all right? And kind of generally speaking, we can determine the resistance by measuring the change in voltage and finding the resulting change in current, delta V over delta I, and get the resistance. In this case, delta V is five volts, delta I is five milliamps. Five volts divided by five milliamps is 1,000 ohms. So this is the uh, line we get for a 1,000 ohm resistor. If that resistor was bigger than 1,000 ohms, we would tend to get less current flow for a given voltage change, and the curve would get more and more horizontal until we reached an open circuit, infinite resistance, where the line was horizontal. Conversely, if we decrease the value of resistance, the same change in voltage would give us much more current, and when we finally reached a point where we had zero resistance, the line would be vertical. I'd like you to keep that in mind when we look at the voltage sources and current sources coming up now. Okay, here is an ideal voltage source represented with the symbol for a battery connected to some load. Now the load could be anything, it could be a resistor, a light bulb, a television set, whatever. It doesn't matter, 
but because this is an ideal voltage source, whatever its terminal voltage is, that is the voltage we get across this load. And we get some resulting current flow through the circuit. The current flow depends on the resistance of the load, and it can be any value. It could be zero, it could be 10 amps, it could be negative 20 amps, it doesn't matter. We still have 10 volts no matter what the load current is. Graphically, we represent that with this line. We have a 10 volt source. It maintains a 10 volt load voltage regardless of the current. So if we have 10 milliamps, we have 10 volts. If we have negative 10, we still have 10 volts. So we have a vertical line here. And remember, whenever we plot current as a function of voltage, whenever the line is vertical, we have zero resistance. We can see that here. R is equal to delta V over delta I. Well, delta V is zero, it never changes. So the current can be any value as long as it's finite, and we're gonna have zero divided by some finite current, which is zero ohms. So the important point to take away here is that the internal resistance of an ideal voltage source is zero ohms. If I were to turn this source down to zero volts, what's left? its internal resistance, zero ohms. Now let's look at a current source. Okay, here we have an ideal current source connected to a load. Now the source forces I sub S and I sub L, well they're the same because it's in series, but I sub L equals I S and the voltage across the load will be whatever is necessary to maintain five milliamps. Okay, so I'm just picking five milliamps arbitrarily here. Could be anything, but let's say that this source does source five milliamps. It's five milliamps regardless of what the load is. So that load could have a 10 volt drop, a five volt drop, negative five or negative 10, it doesn't matter. It's still going to have five milliamps flowing through it. All right, and we know from our previous discussions that when this line is horizontal, that represents infinite resistance. In other words, delta V can be any real number as long as it's finite, and delta I is zero because this line is horizontal, it doesn't change. So any finite number divided by zero is infinity. So what we're taking away here is the internal resistance of an ideal current source is infinite. Now that might seem counterintuitive because you're thinking, well, how can you have five milliamps flowing through infinite resistance? Well, that's what this is all telling us and that's the way it is. So if I were to turn this current source down to zero amps, what would be left over? An open circuit. So if we turn a current source down to zero, we replace it with just an open circuit the internal resistance of a current source is infinite. And this is the explanation. Now, this is an important fact that we're gonna use later in other circuit analysis applications. So keep it in mind, and hopefully this made some sense to you. Look back over these graphs and the calculations if you, know, you need to study this a little bit more, but that's it for now, and I'll see you next time.